Hello and full person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing a discovery of yet another very unusual and record-breaking type of a star system that you see illustrated right here, that we often refer to as a cataclysmic variable. A type of a binary star system, where one of the objects is usually extremely dense and tends to steal some of the material from the other object, and once in a while erupts in extremely powerful explosions, sometimes producing what we refer to as nova, but sometimes just resulting in much brighter emissions, but with very predictable variability. And because all of this is sort of a result of a cataclysm, basically an extremely explosive event on the surface of the white dwarf, we refer to these objects as cataclysmic variables. The cataclysm part can actually happen either on the surface of the white dwarf, inside the accretion disk, or sometimes even happens right here at the border where the material enters the accretion disk. But that's a very general description of what these objects are. Because in reality they do have quite a lot of variability within them. Some of them have a white dwarf and a relatively large star, some of them will have a white dwarf and a star that seems to actually possess white dwarf-like qualities, and some of them seem to actually have stars that are very different from anything else we observe out there. For example in this system, with the name right here, we have these unusual helium emissions suggesting that in this case what's being absorbed from the star is no longer coming from the outer shell and is no longer absorbing hydrogen. It's actually now feeding on helium, making these objects a very specific type of cataclysmic variables. Today the scientists refer to them as helium CVs or helium cataclysmic variables. And for some reason a lot of these helium rich cataclysmic variables will also usually have much shorter orbits with some of these objects only taking a few hours to orbit around one another. Whereas the ones containing hydrogen will often take much much longer. And so at first the scientists weren't really sure how to explain this, but eventually it kind of came to them. They basically realized that it's essentially just part of an evolution of a typical cataclysmic variable. All of this starts as a typical binary system, and there are quite a lot of these in the galaxy, with one maybe a little bit more massive than the other. The more massive star is going to be evolving much quicker and is going to go through its red giant stage, eventually causing the other star to approach it a little bit closer, but also turning into a white dwarf, which is the fate of most of the sun-like stars. And as the white dwarf starts to approach the other star a little bit closer, it eventually starts consuming the outer shell, absorbing the hydrogen from the surface, and produces a classical cataclysmic variable with hydrogen emissions. These are also the ones that usually produce most of the nova. Now that's a very simplified version of what happens here, but that's kind of the idea behind what happens afterwards. With time, the hydrogen shell disappears. And here we're talking about a pretty long time, because you have to basically consume pretty much the entire star made out of hydrogen. Now if there's a lot of mass to be consumed, some of these stars cannot take it anymore and explode as type 1a supernova. This usually requires approximately 1.4 solar masses. But other stars with less mass will continuously consume the star and eventually will probably consume most of the hydrogen. And that's when there's nothing left but helium that's of course produced inside the stars as the hydrogen fuses with more hydrogen. And so the scientists have seen these hydrogen emissions and hydrogen CVs, they've also seen these helium emission stars, which obviously have a lot of mysteries around them, but now the scientists have finally found that missing part. They've discovered a really unusual cataclysmic variable that seems to be a record holder for the fastest orbit of the stars, but also seems to be that missing transition stage. The transition stage between the star consuming hydrogen and then consuming only helium. In this new study that you can find in the description below, the scientists discovered a very unusual binary system, located about 3000 light years away from us, that also already has its own Wikipedia page, that basically orbits around its partner every 51 minutes. And that is, so far, the record. The scientists have never seen such short orbits around typical stars. The previous record holder I think was just over an hour. But more importantly, this particular object also seems to be a transition stage. A transition stage when the white dwarf stops consuming hydrogen and is now slowly switching to consuming helium. But in this case, both objects are actually super super unique as well. Making this a unique object out of approximately a thousand or so CVs the scientists have already discovered. But moreover, the object orbiting around the white dwarf is also very strange and quite unique for several reasons. It would actually be kind of difficult to call it a star at this point. And that's because it's sort of turned into this unusual helium star that's much much smaller than our sun in size and is a lot closer in size to a typical low mass star or actually even closer to Jupiter. 
and though it's about the same temperature as our Sun, over 5000 degrees Celsius, it currently only possesses about one tenth of the mass of the Sun inside the size of a planet like Jupiter. And that's of course because the mass that used to exist here was now absorbed by its partner, which in the process exposed the core of the star and made the star shrink even more, making it extremely dense. And because the scientists were able to observe both hydrogen and helium, as well as some other things like calcium, being absorbed by its partner, it suggests to the scientists that they finally found that missing link. The link between a hydrogen CV and a helium CV. With the white dwarf being just a little bit over half of the mass of our sun, which suggests that it's probably not going to go supernova even when it finishes consuming the partner. Although I guess that's the next question. Is it going to consume the partner completely or what's going to happen to the system in the future? Well, in this paper, the scientists also figured that out as well. They sort of calculated and simulated the potential future of these two partners and discovered something really interesting. First of all, both of them will still be here for a very, very long time. The white dwarf is going to continuously absorb its partner, with the partner growing denser and denser over time. And so even though currently it's already approximately 100 times denser than our sun, it's going to become even more compact as more and more hydrogen is absorbed and more helium is left behind. Which also means that it's going to be decreasing in size over time, but at the same time approaching its partner even more, with their orbits eventually shrinking to roughly around 18 minutes per orbit. Although in this case the scientists suggest that it's going to take approximately 70 million years for all of this to finalize. When it does occur though, this is officially going to be a helium cataclysmic variable, many of which have already been discovered before, with more helium absorbed in the process. But after this, for approximately 300 million years, they're actually slowly going to start moving apart. This graph right here kind of shows us what's probably going to happen. But the increase in orbital period is not going to be dramatic. In this case, the calculations end at approximately 30 minutes, 400 million years later. And then with time, the helium star will probably also turn into a white dwarf, eventually turning this into a typical white dwarf binary. But it's really the discovery of what's happening to the star system right now that makes the scientists really excited about the prospects of studying such an unusual object. It has the shortest period so far. It also indicates that there's quite a lot of absorption of a lot of different elements, most importantly both hydrogen and helium. And of all of the objects discovered, this is right now the most unique one they've discovered. The object that already had quite a few eruptions, but nothing major just yet. And so once it actually has something major happening around the accretion disk of the white dwarf, that's where we're probably going to be hearing more about this, because more discoveries are going to be made coming from this unusual system. But I guess until future discoveries, well, that's pretty much it. A pretty exciting discovery for scientists studying white dwarfs and of course cataclysmic variables or NOVA, and a pretty exciting record holder that seems to have the shortest orbit of two stars. On that note, once we find something else, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Thank you for watching, subscribe, check out all the relevant links in the description below, maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description, and either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.